are moments when the whole world listens, for much is at stake. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Hello there. I was just listening to some of the sounds of spring. There are a lot of sounds that compete for our attention these days. Usually, the bigger ones get it. But sometimes, equal or even more important sounds, the ones we have to try harder to hear, are missed. I'm a listener, and so are you, or you should be. I listen a lot, and I talk a lot. And I'm really concerned about communication. All of us make some pretty serious mistakes in this area. There are a few things I've learned that perhaps I could share with you. They're not original with me, but they've been helpful to me. So are you listening and watching? This house belongs to some friends of mine, Roger and Joan Manning. Right now, they're out back having a barbecue. Thank okay. you. Well, anyway, I was telling you, you know the teacher. Yeah, hmm? You know the teacher when he came. Yeah. Well, we thought he's, we were going to get in a whole bunch. Yeah. Roger, Joan, and their children make some of the same mistakes that you and I make, and I think that if we watch carefully, we can learn some things. Uh, let's just hurry it on a bit. What's going on here, Rick? Oh, hi, Dad. Why aren't you asleep? Well, that's what I would like to know. What in the world are you doing? Just listening to some music. I can't sleep. 
So you don't want anybody else in the house to sleep either, is that it? Will you turn that thing off? Sorry, I didn't think you could hear it up there. Now look, it's 3.30 in the morning. Sorry, I just can't sleep. Now listen to me. You've got to go to school in the morning. Now what kind of grades do you expect to get if you can't even stay awake in class? I know, I know. And your health. You want to have a breakdown before you're 20 just because you stay up all night listening to that, that drivel? Sorry. Now you get to bed, you hear? Now if this father had been listening, not just to crickets and the dripping tap, if he'd stopped talking long enough to listen, he might have learned some important things. Watch. What's going on here, Rick? I just can't sleep. Can't sleep? What's the trouble? It's nothing. Something bothering you? Well, after school, some guys were talking about, well, about girls and stuff. Dad, you don't want to listen to this. Of course I do, son. Well, we've always been taught in church that, well, you know, but, but some of the guys seem With to a little listening, that, you can learn a lot. Well, it takes time, yeah, kind of but in the long run, it saves time. Not and saves souls, too. Humor. For human values are at stake, and people very close to you. Thanks, Dad. Sorry I ruined your sleep. That's all right. I'll see you later. Would you hit the light? Unfortunately, most of us are pretty bad listeners, in spite of the fact that listening is one of our major occupations. In fact, of all the time we spend with our family, at work, in church, in all areas, the average person spends 70% of his waking hours in communication, 9% in writing, 16% in reading, 30% in talking, and 45% in listening. Oranges, eggs, and uh, two quarts of milk, okay? Eggs and milk, right. Bye, sweet. I'd be a good girl. Bye. Mm -hmm. And oranges. Oranges, eggs, and milk, right. Bye-bye. And listening, in which we spend most of our time, is the aspect of communication at which we're least effective, and the one at which we should be most effective. Because without listening, there is no two-way communication. Hey, come on, why aren't those shoes on? I can't do it, you do it. Of course you can do it, I've watched you do it hundreds of times. Now get those shoes on. You do it, I want you to. I'm cleaning the kitchen today. And then there's the ironing, and the vacuuming, and my Sunday school lesson. I have 10,000 things to do today, and one of them is not putting shoes on a big girl who can do it very well for herself. Now get a move on. This mother was listening all right, but with her ears not with her heart. If she'd been listening for understanding as well as for information, not just to the words, but to what's behind the words, she would have learned what her child was really saying. Of course you can do it. Now get those shoes on. You do it. I want you to. All you ever do is work. I want you to pay attention to me. I'm important too. Ten minutes, my love. Then I've got to get back to work. You get your shoes on. I'll get the scissors and glue. Oh, boy. I'd like to make a book today, okay? Okay. You know what I'd like to draw on it? Now what? Ella. Oh, fine. Then, um, I'll cut you out a little book. And you can put elephants in it, all right? Listening. Real listening is a dimension of love. It confirms our concern and says, I care about you. Come in. Hi, Raj. Oh, hi, Steve. Well, I did it. Hmm? And that problem with the invoices, I stayed up half the night figuring and refiguring, but finally I got to the bottom of it. Yeah. It's basically a matter of incorrect filing. So I worked out this brilliant new plan. No chance for a foul up. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. Yeah, well, I was up till 2 o'clock in the morning. I never thought so hard in my life, but I did it. It works like this, Rog. Rog. Excuse me, Steve. Yeah. 
Harry. Huh. If that's all he cares, why should I knock myself out trying to be creative for his stinking department? The, uh, the shipment we were talking about? As you've right. guessed, there was more being said here than what was spoken. Roger's employee was asking for a little recognition, a little yeah, praise. Listen, um, but Roger wasn't really listening. That, uh, he was talking, right. however. By his facial expression, his posture, his vocal tone, he was saying, ho oh, hum, big deal. Now, if this wasn't what he wanted to say, he'd better try it again. And this time, he'd better watch his nonverbal language. And that problem with the invoices? I was up half the night figuring and refiguring, but finally I got to the bottom of it. Yeah? It's basically a matter of incorrect filing. So I developed this brilliant new plan, no chance for a foul. Hey, well, that sounds great. Yeah, well, I stayed up till to, to about 2 o'clock. Are they? I've never thought so hard in my life. An important relationship strengthened instead of damaged, just through a little appreciative listening, and perhaps some important benefits to the business, too. got nowhere with it. It's absolutely nowhere. And you cracked it just like this? But it isn't always the employer who fails to listen. Frequently, the employee is guilty of the same fault. Oh, okay, thanks. Make sure these payments to Wallen and company get out in the afternoon's mail. Okay. If he doesn't get his money within 30 days, there's a great big fat finance charge. Yeah. I learned my lesson from him last summer. He knows every trick in the book. I'll bet. So don't give him a chance, huh? Uh, right. Uh, Tim? Yes, please. Uh, these casting totals come to almost $39,000, so I think we'll be all right. Wow. Steve? Yeah. What's this late payment charge from the Wallen Company? Wow. This life isn't long enough for each person to make all the mistakes himself. And the only way to learn from the experience of others is to listen. Really listen. Whether at work or at church or at home, listening is a vital component of leadership. Without it, we can't do our work effectively or can we help others with theirs. Now, one place where listening is absolutely vital and most often neglected is in our personal relationships, in our families, in our marriages. Take a look. Car. I can't believe it. We can't afford a sure second car. Sure we can, Annie. Sure. The payments are only 50 bucks a month. Where's Come on, Where's the money going to come from, I'd like to know? $50 a month. Out of my food money, maybe? I, 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 don't. Don't worry about it, Joan. We can manage all right. I've worked out a very strict budget. Why didn't you ask me about it? Oh, Joan. I'm never consulted about anything around here. It's your birthday present. I thought it'd be a surprise. It's a surprise, all right. Oh, Joan, I only did it for you. I thought you'd be pleased. Look, it's got an automatic transmission on the floor. Pleased? Roger, not if it means getting deeper and deeper into debt, which we're too far into now. Look, it starts right up the first time. Even when it's cold. No more taking the bus when you go downtown. We hear all the time at church and at conference to get out of debt. Get out of debt and stay out. Joan, I just did it for you. You didn't do it for me. You did it for yourself. If you'd have done it for me, you wouldn't have done it. Well, thanks a lot. That's the kind of gratitude I get. Never mind. I don't want to discuss it. Well, that's fine with me. <laughs> Too bad. Now, if Roger and Joan had cared less about defending their own point of view and had been more concerned about learning and listening to the point of view of the other person, this situation might have brought them closer instead of damaging their relationship. If each could really listen closely enough and sympathetically enough to be able to restate the other's position, something like this might happen. But we just don't seem to think alike on this. Do you understand what I'm feeling? I think so. You feel that it would be real nice to have a second car, okay? But you also feel that it would be much nicer to get out of debt. From your point of view, security. There's a lot more in the balance here than the issue of a second car. The quality of any vital relationship rests on the ability to listen, to really communicate. 
This is a principle which has eternal implications in every phase of our mortal and spiritual existence. Let's take learning, for example. It's easy to blame the teacher for our lack of interest, but do we really put forth an effort to understand? Sure wish I didn't have that report in sociology next period. Wish my turn was tomorrow. Let's see. I'm going to talk about our city's crime rate compared to the rate 10 years ago. Yeah, that's not a very interesting opening. Ten years ago, your chance of being murdered in this city... Yeah, that's a lot better. I talked with Commissioner Rollins. Commissioner Rollins? I wouldn't trust him as far as I could throw him. Not after last election. What a phony. <laughs> Nuts, the whole school's catching cold. It'd be just my luck to get it right in time for the game this weekend. Which reminds me, I've got to find out about the car for Friday. Another area that's becoming very popular is the field of social services. Hmm, that's what I've been planning on going into. Hey, did you hear what he said about the social services? Later. Rick missed something just now. Something he needed to know. But he let a little preoccupation, a little prejudice, a little laziness get in his way. But school isn't the only place where this happens. What about our communication at church? Real listening is not a passive exercise. It's a concentrated effort to receive the intended communication from another. Ours is a speaking church, a telling church, but it must also be a listening church. Is it? I know that we're here on, on this earth for, well, many important reasons. We was placed here... Uh, we to be was? Tried. Good grief. Makes me cringe to hear language like that. Guess you can't have anything too important to say. And the more we can learn to love in the way that the Lord loved, the closer we are in doing what we when he said that we should love our My goodness. That Nielsen child won't let us sit through one meeting in peace. They just don't discipline their children at all. That's the trouble. The trick is that we can love those who have in some way injured us. That's the general idea. What's that? What idea? I don't know. They missed something at that meeting. They let a little prejudice get in the way of communication. It is not strange that the Lord has often said of his people, they have ears but hear not. If only all of us would really listen to our peers, to our prophets, to our conscience, and to the Lord. It's important to speak to the Lord, to say the things that we want to say, but what about listening? Do we ever finish our part of the prayer and listen to what the Lord has to say through the promptings of His Spirit? Silence is invaluable. There's a special kind of stillness that precedes revelation and inspiration. The Lord told us in Psalms, be still and know that I am God. The sounds that compete for our attention are numerous, overwhelming. To choose what to hear and then to really listen with the ears, the heart, with understanding, that is wisdom. Listen. <laughs> 